You won't be rich, you won't have wealth, but you'll have something much better. Respect in the professional army. You will be respected wherever you go. Mrs. Gandhi went on in 1973 to elevate you to field marshal. But did she also offer you the job of chief of defense staff to go with it? No. No, she didn't. She made me a field marshal. She said, Sam, you like the British. Will you go as high commissioner? And I said, no, prime minister. You've forgotten my oath. When I took over as army chief, I'd taken an oath and I told you I will accept nothing from the government but I will command my army without any interference. She said, but you accepted the rank of field marshal. And I said, that was my birthright. I went to a camp, where all the soldiers were and soldiers. So when I went, I got the soldiers from the Pakistan soldiers. I got the soldiers from the Pakistan soldiers. I said, I can see you. آپ احتساب لے گئے اور وہی سوال ہمیشہ جو میرے جوان سے جانوں سے پوچھتا ہوں وہی پوچھا کہ صاحب پلنگ میں ختمل تو نہیں ہے کہ نہیں صاحب مچھردانی ہے مچھردانی ہاں صاحب میں لنگر میں جا سکتا ہوں وہ لنگر میں گیا وہ جوان روٹی گوٹ رہا تھا جیسے آپ نے کر دیا اس سے میں کھانا ٹیس کر سکتا ہوں پھر لیٹرین میں گیا وہاں پاکستانی بھنگی کام کرتا تھا میں نے ہاتھ ملایا اس نے انکار کیا میں کہا کہ میرے سے ہاتھ بھی نہیں ملائے گا تو اس نے ہاتھ ملایا جب ہم واپس آ گئے تو وہ سوبدار میرے صاحب مجھے کہتے ہیں کہ حضور آپ گستاخی معاف کریں گے میں کہا آپ سوبدار میرے صاحب ہیں جو مرضی ہے کہیں کہتا اب ہمیں معلوم ہو گئی صاحب کہ آپ کی فوج کیوں جیتی ہے آپ آئے آپ نے ہم سے پوچھا کھانا ٹھیک ہے खटमल तो नहीं है मच्छरदानी है वगैरह भंगी के साथ भी आपने हाथ में हमारे साहब लोग ऐसा नहीं करते वो अपने आप को नवाब ज़्यादा समझते हैं आई वेंट टू पाकिस्तान अबाउट टू मंथ्स आफ्टर द कॉन्फ्लिक्ट एंड दे रियली गेव मी अ फर्स्ट क्लास वेलकम द गवर्नर दिस वॉज एट लाहौर द गवर्नर इन्वाइट मी फॉर लंच gave me a martini before lunch, wines at lunch. And during lunch, he said, General, can you, will you do me a favor? So I said, if I can, Mr. Governor, I will. I thought he was going to be asking me about some relation of it. He said, my staff is outside. They want to shake hands with you. I went out. And there they were all lined up. About the 11th man took his pagri off and put it at my feet. So I picked it up. They gave it to my yeki wapne kia. Kata Hazur, aap te to hum bach gaye. Mere paanch ladke aapke kaidi hai. Unki chithi aati hai. Kya aapne sabko Quran Sharif di. Wo log barak me sote hai, aapke jawan bahar sote hai. Wo log char pai pe sote hai, aapke jawan jabin pe sote hai. Aap jab jate hai, haat milate hai sabke saat. लंगर में जाके खाना टेस्ट करते हैं। He turned around, the governor was with me. अब हम कभी नहीं मानेंगे साहब के हिंदू खराब हैं। And I got into trouble in my own country. The bureaucrats and the ministers complained about me. कि चीफ साहब तो उनको ऐसा रखते हैं कि जैसे उनके जवाई हैं, as if they were my sons-in-law. They complained against me, cabinet meeting, at the meeting. Mr. Gandhi looked at me, I said, Prime Minister, they were soldiers. They fought. They fought extremely well. They lost. And I'm looking after the soldiers.
It was after the 1971 conflict. I was in my room. There was a little girl from some magazine. She came and talked to me about all sorts of things. She had my chocolates and she did all sorts of things. And then she asked me that, Field Marshal, you belong to the Frontier Force Regiment, which is in Pakistan. Why didn't you go to Pakistan? And I said, Mr. Jinnah did ask me. I said, I've finished commanding. I'm now an Indian. I've got a married an Indian girl and I'm here. And then she asked me, and what would have happened if you had gone to Pakistan? So I bent her over and slapped her bottom. I said, I should have won the war and I would have thrashed you. On 1st of January 1973, he was made India's first field marshal, a rank that is held for life. He therefore continues to be the senior most officer of the Indian Army. This was in Burma in 1942. I was commanding a Sikh company, big tough chaps. I had a man called Sohan Singh. Big man, stood about six foot four. So we had a promotion conference with the commanding officer and Sohan Singh's name came up and I said, no, no use making him, he'll be broken tomorrow. So he was passed over. I came back to my Basha, where my company was in the jungle, and I found my senior Subhidar Balwan Singh terribly worried. And he said, Saab, Sohan Singh ko kaid kar diya. I said, kyun kya hua? Usne bola ke aaj aapko saab boli marega. I said, oh, achha, peshi ho. Sohan Singh, kya baat hai? So I said, Tumne bola ka tu humko goli marega. So I picked up the pistol, loaded it, walked up to him, handed the pistol to him. I said, Tera jail hai marne ka maro. And he said, Nay saab galti ho ga. So I gave him a tight slap. Case dismissed. Ja bharo. Now ladies and gentlemen, if you think I wasn't frightened, you are mistaken. I was terrified. If once you show fear, in front of men that you may be commanding. It doesn't matter whether they're soldiers, they're clerks, they're labor, there are students. Once you show fear, you should quit. What was your greatest achievement in the army? Do you know, from the rank of second lieutenant to field marshal, I have never punished a man. My Adjutant General, when I was the Chief and my Judge Advocate General used to get, oh, why this court martial proceedings would come to me? If they said not guilty, I'd sign. If they said guilty and punished, and I'd take the file home, I'd look at it, I'd say, no, I think witness number three has lied, it's the so and such thing. And they say, sir, how can we maintain discipline with you as the Army Chief and not punish? I said, you damn chaps, sit. Sit in Delhi with your wife and your children in lovely homes and you forget what those chaps are going through. One evening at four o'clock in my office I was having tea when Mrs. Gandhi rang up. She was in Parliament House. Sam, are you very busy? And I said, Prime Minister, the Army Chief is always busy, but never too busy to talk to his Prime Minister. She said, can you come over? And I said, I'm having tea here. She said, oh, I'll give you tea. I said, I have good tea here. You give me muck. He said, oh, come over. So I said, okay. So I got hold of the ADC. I said, the girl wants me. Come on, get the car. The girl wants me. I was you always knew I'd talk like that. So we got into the car, went to Parliament House. She was sitting in her office with a kidney-shaped table. I walked in in my breezy way. I said, hello, Prime Minister. You seem worried. What's wrong? She said, I've got problems. So I said, oh, cry on my shoulder. What are your problems? And she looked me straight in the face and said, you are my problem. So 
So I said, now what have I done? Have I made a speech? Have I done something stupid? So I said, what have I done now? He said, everybody says you're going to take over from me. So I said, and what do you think? She says, you can't. And I said, oh, you think I'm so incompetent? I didn't mean that, Sam, you wouldn't. She has a long nose, I have a longer one. I put my nose leg first. I want to tell you, I have no intention or even a thought of getting involved in politics or taking over, as long as I command my army without interference. When I became army chief, Muraji Bai was the finance minister in Mrs. Indra Gandhi's cabinet. And then he became prime minister. Mrs. Gandhi lost the election, he became prime minister. One day he said, I believe you drink. So I said, yes, I have. You mustn't drink. Be bad for you. So I said, Prime Minister. I come to my Prime Minister, he said, you mustn't drink. I go to a party and I talk to a pretty girl. My wife says, you mustn't talk to her. I'm a field marshal, is life worth living? He says, your wife is quite right. Drinks and pretty girls will ruin you. I said, they haven't ruined me so far. <laughs> Soon after the war, General Manik Shah was awarded the Padma Vibhushan for his exemplary contribution to the nation. I was sent to Kashmir with V.P. Menon, who was the state secretary. Uh, the Maharaja's army had, the Muslim element had revolted, the tribesmen had come in, and I was sent there with him, V.P. Menon, to see if he could get the accession from the Maharaja meet what the military situation was like and uh, at about midnight the Maharaja signed kept on saying you must send soldiers in he said, we can't send soldiers into your state unless you accede to India so at midnight he acceded to India BP Menon handed over the accession papers to Mountbatten and Mountbatten looked at me he said Manakji <laughs> he didn't call him Manik. Manikji, what's the military situation like? It's very bad, sir. Uh, the tribes are busy looting and raping about nine kilometers away from Srinagar and the airfield. If they once get in, we've lost Kashmir because we won't be able to fly troops in, etc. So he looked at Nehru and Nehru talked and all until Sardar Patel lost his temper. He said, Jawaharlal, do you want Kashmir or do you want to hand it over? He said, of course, of Kashmir is ours now. So he said, will you issue orders? And before he could issue orders, Sardar Patel said, you have received your orders. So I walked out, walked out and we started flying troops into Kashmir. What was your relationship with Sardar Patel like? Sardar Patel was the uh, home minister and I had a good relationship with him. Uh, every morning, VP Menon and I would go to his place and he would be sitting down there. His daughter, Bunny Ben, be sitting cross-legged with a Parker Fountain, a brown Parker Ben taking notes. And he would say, VP, I want Baroda, take him with you. I would go as the bogeyman in uniform. When the killings were taking place in Calcutta, by British commander in chief, he came along and said, Hey, you, the Sardar wants you in Calcutta. So I said, Why me, sir? He phoned, he wants you there. An aircraft has been laid on for you. So I went there. 
the Sadar was with the Chief Minister, B.C. Roy. When I went in there, he said, I don't want any arguments, etc. I'm going to ask you a question, I want an answer. If I hand over the situation to the army, how many Bengalis will you kill and how long will it take you? I was a very young brigadier. So I opened my mouth and I said, sir, about a hundred, about a month. So he said, turned around to Bidhan Roy, he said, thousands are being killed. He said, go and kill them, take over. And he deployed troops all over Calcutta. We didn't have to kill anybody. Everything finished. He said, come here. And in Gujarati he tells me, Tame Satsu nahi bolo? Looking at your life as a military general, having all that power at your command, are you happy with the way things went? Was there anything you would have liked to have done differently in your entire career as a general, as a soldier? Quite happy. And how about your personal life? I had a very pleasant personal life. I had my two daughters, I had my grandchildren, I had my wife, I had my Gurkhas, quite happy.